Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, VCon viewers. This is the stream, and this is the last session of our talk podium at our virtual exhibition. We're talking about man and machine, and in particular, we're talking about training at Heller. We can see a machine here in the background, but um, first of all, we can see four people that I'd like to introduce to you. I'd like to introduce Verena to you. Verena Mandik is an apprentice. Uh, she's going to become a cutting machine operator operator, three and a half years of vocational training. Then Stefan Meyer, he's a mechatronics trainee. And uh, this is also a three and a half year training course. I would like to welcome Achim Hamlai. Since August last year, he is the master trainer for the apprentices in the electrical trade. And at nine, in 1989, he started as an apprentice himself here at Heller. And here is the boss, the head of vocational training, Martin Schmeckenbecher. And he's joined, um, he joined Heller at the beginning of the year. So it's great that all of you are here. And it's great that we can talk about training, vocational training at Heller. And I would like to turn to you, the viewers, your audience. I mean, you've been with us uh, throughout some of the sessions, I understand. And you can ask questions. Please post your questions in the chat. And at the end of the session, we are going to come back to those questions and we will answer them for you. Now, Mr. Schmeckenbecher, I just introduced you. You are the head of vocational training since the beginning of this year. You've been with Heller, so you're kind of the youngest Heller uh, employee here um, at the session. So now, how did you experience Heller? What are you fascinated by at Heller? What are you fascinated by now uh, at, for training at Heller? Yes, I'm the youngest employee, as it were, here at Heller. Now, the training here at Heller is very precise. Now, in training, we work on the individual. So the apprentice is at the center of attention. So it's all very individualized. And people also focus very much on team building within the company on the one hand. So it's the human being, it's the individual. But on the other hand, people also work very intensely on the product, the machine tool. And every day we learn that we manufacture these machine tools. So the apprentices take part in this value added chain right from the beginning through to the entire apprenticeship period. So on the one hand, it's the individual and it's the machine. Now, speaking about machine, uh, let's talk to Verena and Steffen. So what is this? This is a machine. But Verena, what kind of machine is this? Well, it's the Profi Trainer, a five-axis machine. So this is a machine that we, as the apprentices, manufacture and we get trained on this machine. So it's kind of a miniature milling machine, right? And Stefan, I can see that it's got a proper control system. So this is a machine tool on miniature. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. It's like the big machine. It's got the Heller control system, so everybody can operate it. So every operator operating a large machine can also operate this small PT. Now, what are your roles as cutting machine operator and mechatronics trainee? So you, as a cutting machine operator, Verena, how do you contribute to this profi trainer. Now, we manufacture all the individual parts. As you can see, the column, the B-axis carrier, the round rotary table, uh, the cover. So we produce all these parts. And how does this project work? Because you also work with the electronics. So that's Stefan's part. But before that, well, the technical product designers start producing the drawings. They pass them on to us. We, as the cutting machine operators, produce these parts. We pass them on to the industrial mechanic. And then they assemble the profit trainer. It is passed on to the mechatronics people and the electronics people, and they do all the wiring. 
now commissioning and wiring, uh, that is what you do, correct? Yes, as the electricians and electronics people, we connect the sensors and we do the commissioning and we also set the axis and verify zero points. So a project like this is not, it just doesn't happen overnight. I can see that different jobs and different occupations take part in this project. So what is so special about this project? Now, we cooperate very closely. We cooperate with the master technicians, with the master electricians, electronics people and between the first and the fourth apprenticeship year we work on the profi trainer now we heard a lot about this machine the profi trainer now training at heller enjoys a very good reputation in the region here and before i talk about this to mr schmeckenberg i would like to ask you how come you applied for an apprenticeship at heller verena well a friend of mine she's a technical product designer and she told me that training is really fun at Heller. She enjoyed it very much. And then I went um, to the applic applicant's day and I left my resume here. Yes, a friend of mine recommended me, you know, he said to me, just uh, take a look. And then I became an intern and I also left my resume here and it worked. Now, finally, we were talking about your application, uh, but you've been with Heller for a few years already. Now, was it, was it the right decision? Um, what do you like about your work here at Heller? Yes, it was the right decision. I'm just fascinated by the fact that I can learn something new every day and it's different things that I learn and I work with uh, wonderful colleagues and wonderful master trainers and many of them have become my friends. Yes, it was the right decision to join Hella and the cooperation with the colleagues and with the master trainers is absolutely great and I also like the content, I like what we learn and I like the work with the profi trainer. Now, I, told, I said at the beginning that you have almost already completed your apprenticeship and uh, some of you are taking their exams right now so I wish you all the best for your exams. Thanks Verena, thanks, thanks Stefan. And um, I will come back to Mr. Schmeckenbecher. Mr. Schmeckenbecher, we heard a lot about the integration of the profi trainer into the apprenticeship concept and the training concept but um, Verena and Stefan said that it is also great that they can work in a team and that it is kind of a unique selling point uh, that uh, the cooperation with the master trainers is so good. So what is the philosophy um, that you are guided by? What is important about the work with the profi trainer? Well, you know, the profi trainer is a real prod product and it is closely related to the company and it is the cooperation in the team, the cooperation between apprentices and the trainers. You know, there are positive things that happen, maybe sometimes there are setbacks, but this is, happen this is what ha what's happening in everyday life. So um, we actually support the apprentices as a group but they also work with us and then of course they're also supported by other professionals in the company so work scheduling and planning the purchasing department so you can get support from there as well and then you know everything is networked the vocational training is closely related to what happens at Heller we hear a lot about Industry 4.0, and Industry 4.0 is a reality here, just on one square meter. So it is a project that develops, and we have a three-axis machine, a four-axis machine, or a five-axis machine, and we can teach skills, we can extend and expand skills, by, for example, integrating a measuring probe, a vibration switch, things like that, or visualization, and this becomes 
a project that evolves and it is not static, it is something that is dynamic. And I think that's very important for vocational training. Ahim Hamla, you have been a trainer in the apprenticeship department, but you've been with the company for many years. Now, building a machine tool on miniatures like this uh, Profi Trainer requires a lot of skill and competencies um, in, with the apprentices. So the two of them here have already reached the end more or less the end of their apprenticeship. But uh, what kind of skill is required and what is the process like? Now, the process is as follows. Now, the uh, apprentices start uh, in the first year and they learn the basic skills such as uh, stripping cables or filing. So all these basics, in the second year, they move on and, um, you know, we can teach more complex things such as uh, how the switch panels are built, how the cabinets are assembled. So it is still en miniature, if you like, so that apprentices can still master the challenge. Now, in the big machine, we have to say that uh, you've got a two-square-meter switch panel, but of course that is too much for an apprentice. So this is why we have this en miniature uh, machine tool. Now, in the third year, this is when uh, the apprentices learn how to do commissioning the same way as we do it. And then you go to your rotation uh, place. This is apprenticeship rotation, so they move to other departments. Um, for example, when I was in, mainten in the maintenance department, the uh, apprentices came to me for a little while, and then I can say, you know, you know how the data backup works. Can you do the data? data backup for this machine and, uh, you know. Now, maybe we have to explain what this means, the rotation. It means that the apprentices are placed in other departments, in the, in the real departments, to work with real projects for a certain time. Yes, this is all about, uh, you know, making sure that the um, apprentice gets to know other areas and, um, you know, the, the, the department might say, well, I like this apprentice, maybe when they've finished their apprenticeship, they can join our department. I mean, you can never know everything. You may build the switch panel, but you do not know how the wiring works and so on. So if then the apprentices come to the actual department, they can learn all about that. Now, as the master trainer, how do you support the apprentices? Well, you know, I'm not the type of person who just says, you know, you have to do it this way or that way. I regard myself as a coach. When something doesn't work, I support them. But apart from that, the apprentices are supposed to kind of learn for themselves. Of course, I always make sure that it is in line with the VDE guidelines. This is something that we have to fulfill. But, you know, they have to do it themselves. This is how they learn. Not not by giving them instructions all the time. So does this mean that the apprentices have a lot of scope um, for themselves, a freedom, and maybe also quite a high level of responsibility? So I think you need that in order to be able to build such a machine already during your apprenticeship. Let's say a few words about the reputation of vocational training here at Heller. I addressed this topic with the, the two apprentices already. Um, training enjoys quite a good reputation around here, not least because this profi trainer is manufactured here by the apprentices. You have a lot of experience as a uh, head of training what do you think about it? Well, yes, you're absolutely right. It's great. I mean, which company can offer a product where the apprentice can say, I made this myself? And we think it's important that you know, that the product is developed as a product, but we should also take the product and uh, present my job or my company, for example, at a trade show or with customers. 
Now, we had a delivery of a profi trainer for a vocational college. So our apprentices, also Verena, were there. And they actually took up the role of trainers. They instructed the uh, people at the uh, vocational college in using the profi trainer. And she was able to say, you know, I manufactured it. I did the CNC training with this machine. So it is my knowledge that I can teach and transfer, transfer for other people. So this is real project work. And um, this is when the apprentices can take up responsibility. And this is also how they are competent, also social competence. We also need this in a company such as Heller. The company is networked and the apprentices are also networked. Now you said it, um, networking within the company, we talked about external reputation and image, but a project and the apprenticeship, the vocational training as such, is also interesting when it comes to internal marketing. So you uh, will have to be networked with all the other departments. You're not just an island here at Heller. Yes, absolutely. Um, this is uh, how, you know, it is all transparent throughout the company. The apprentice is known in the company and they can actually build knowledge before they go to the other department on rotation. So in this department, they can take back knowledge of what they've learned there back to vocational training and teach their colleagues, the other apprentices. So that's great for the apprentice on the one hand, but it's also great for the company and um, the colleagues um, that our apprentices really get trained on the actual pro product. It's not that we are a service provider providing some kind of vocational training that nobody needs. We train our apprentices on our product. So we can be proud of that as well. Both the big machines and the square meter of industry 4.0 that is represented by our profit trainer here. Now, training at Heller is not only comprised of the profi trainer. You already mentioned the fact of taking up responsibility, of uh, also assuming social responsibility for other people. Now, there are some initiatives that enable that, so looking beyond your horizons, taking up the social responsibility. How is this integrated into the curriculum? Well, yes, there are some initiatives. They are, you know, kind of modules and components of the training. Now, at the end of our apprenticeship, we want a good skilled worker or a good graduate. And uh, one module in our training is social responsibility. So it's not only Heller as a company, but our apprentice, uh, apprentices themselves. And we have an initiative where our apprentices come together and we bring them together with uh, people with disabilities. And it's about overcoming obstacles and inhibitions. We have a soccer tournament with the sheltered workshops here uh, in Nürtingen. We also support the church. So socially deprived families get food um, at the church and there's also a dance that we organize uh, of the apprentices and people with disabilities in order to overcome these borders and overcome these obstacles. So responsibility for each other, social responsibility, working across borders. And um, our experience is that a first contact is a little tricky, but the second and the third contact is always um, something that works smoothly. It's like with a machine, you just have to start it up and then it works. So our experience is positive. 
And in times of Corona, things are a little more difficult, but um, we're still on standby, as it were. We are doing projects with the sheltered workshops where we provide know-how and support, for example, with fixtures. So we think it is very important to build this social competence as well. So it's actually inclusion, yeah. Practicing inclusion and the um, cooperation with the sheltered workshops is sometimes is something that is continued. It's not only individual events. It's uh, something that happens all the time, right? Yes, that's correct. Well, thanks very much. Uh, let's take a look at the chat. I told you that you can put questions in the chat. So for the last time, really, unfortunately. Unfortunately, this time, I would like to ask Ines. And Ines, I think I can say that you yourself were an apprentice and you were actually the sponsor for the apprentices for a little while. So you are the best person to do this job at this session. So are there any questions in the chat? Unfortunately, no questions on the topic of training. Well, there's no question from the community. So um, I think we've been able to cover a lot of things already. But um, I have a final question for you, Mr. Schmeckenberger. And actually, you already uh, mentioned it. At the end of um, you know these podiums or panel discussions, people like to talk about the future. Uh, you talked about Industry 4.0, Training 4.0 at Heller. Now, of course, training, vocational training must not come to a standstill. So what will vocational training look like in the future? And are there other things that can be carried over to other areas at Heller from apprenticeship training? Now, what are the prospects for training? Well, I think a training shouldn't be something, you know, that is a closed shop or something that is shut off. Um, the training department has to open up. Vocational training can move things in a company. Uh, many change processes are driven by the young people, the young people who are in training, who are um, studying at university. So as the more senior people or as trainers and masters, we mustn't slow the young people down. We've got to um, recognize their capabilities, their skills, for example, in the digital age, how they use their mobile phones, their smartphones, for example. So we've got to allow them to do that. We've got to allow them to use these new technolo technologies, and uh, sometimes there may be situations where they teach us. It's not that uh, the trainers only train the apprentices. Sometimes we get trained by our apprentices. So this is how change can move in a company. So we can give them a certain scope of action, and we can simply trust them. And we can place our trust in them. They can take up the responsibility. And that, I think, is the future of modern vocational training. So we can also be led by our apprentices. They can guide us from time to time, not only the other way around. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you, Martin Schmeckenbecher, Achim Hamlai. Thank you very much. And uh, once again, thanks to Verena and Stefan. Now, one last time, I'm going to ask Ines, because experience in the last few days has shown that sometimes questions emerge. No more questions? Okay. That is wonderful. So we've got a last uh, final slide here for you, because if you are interested in the topic of training at Heller, I think we have been given a great insight. It's the human that is at the center of the attention, and that is the foundation for making sure that a machine like this can be produced en miniature or as a big machine later on. So if you need any further information on training at Heller, you can always look at our website or you can follow us on Instagram, the uh, training department is present there. 
together with marketing. Now, for the last time, I would like to thank all of you, the viewers, the participants. Thanks for posting questions. Thanks for making contributions to VCon. I think it was a superb format. It was uh, very interesting, and we are going to continue with this format in the future. And even if this was the last session on the podium, the VCon will remain open until 6 o'clock. You can move around on the virtual platform and chat with our colleagues, and you can get all the information that you need on products and services made by Heller. So, thanks very much. And we would like to wish you a great afternoon and enjoy yourselves at VCon.